friends, welcome back to Bubbly Balloon Cab. My name is Rachel. This is another episode of our Balloon Garland Basic Series. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be walking you through everything you need to know about Aqua Bobo balloons. How do you use them? How do you inflate them? How do you tie them? Because, oh my gosh. And then how do you actually incorporate them into designs? How do you attach them and actually get them to, you know, work with your design, stay in your design, whether you're doing a balloon garland, a balloon arch, whatever. I'm also gonna be comparing the brand name ones. I've got three different sizes to show you with the dupes you can get on Amazon. They're a little bit cheaper. I think they're pretty similar, but I'm gonna put them side by side so you can decide. So let's jump right in. Now these aqua bobo balloons are very similar to deco bubble balloons. Now if you're using deco bubble balloons, they inflate and tie in the same fashion. I don't have any here to compare them for you, but they're very similar. As far as I understand, the aqua bobo and the deco bubble are actually made in the same facility from the same material. They're both sold by Qualitex. The main difference, as far as I understand, is the finish is a little different. The aqua bobo has a beautiful, super clear, like incredible clarity in the finish. And the deco bubble are a little bit longer lasting. Um, with the aqua bobos, I find that they tend to deflate like faster than most other balloons. And apparently the deco bubbles last considerably longer. So if you're doing like a helium, like a one-off beautiful big giant stuffed balloon or something like that, um, the deco bubble is probably a good choice. If you're doing like a garland that's only supposed to last for, you know, a day or a few days, I think aqua bobo is gonna be a safe bet for you. So let's go ahead and unpack these and take a look at what we're working with. So the Amazon dupes, let's start with those. Uh, this bag is a little beat up, I apologize. You can tell that I actually use these a lot. Uh, but this is what a, you know, an unopened, brand new Aqua Bobo balloon looks like. Now the Qualtex ones have a plastic pink layer on either side, and these do not. So I think the clarity on those is gonna be a little better than these, just common sense. But as far as the balloon, it's pretty simple. You know, it's very flat. It's, it's not super stretchy you know, thick plastic material is actually made from PVC. And then there's this long tail here for inflating and tying. So the first thing to do is actually gonna be to like stretch this out a few times as best you can. And to be honest, I usually, I try to stretch it two or three times in, in each of the main directions. Sometimes I'll even like put a little bit of air in it, let that out and then stretch a little cause I feel like I get a better stretch out of it after that. But apparently that kind of pre-stretch helps uh, prevent it from popping when you're inflating. I've definitely had that happen on me. It's not fun. So you know the drill. We're just gonna go ahead and open this tail up. Go ahead, slip it over the valve. And I'm gonna do a little inflation. I'm gonna go ahead and let that air out. And then just give it another stretch or two, just so it's pre-stretched. Because when these are inflating, you guys, you might get that anxiety like I do. They're so tight and it really stretches out the balloon when you inflate it that I just, I want all the odds in my favor. Okay, so to inflate for real this time, we're gonna go ahead and take the tail here, slip it over the nozzle, and you're gonna need a really firm grip to really um, hold that tail to the nozzle and not let any air back out. Okay, and then just inflate. So here's what's super unique about the Aqua Bobos. They actually have quite a large range of how large or small it can be once you've inflated. Okay, so this is probably the smallest I'd go with it. I believe this is rated at 20 inches, somewhere in that range, maybe between 18 and 22. Um, but I do know that it doesn't actually go as large as they say. Um, so you are gonna have to kind of feel it out a little bit and see what you're comfortable with. This is probably as small as I would go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and inflate some more and show you how large I feel safe with it going. And for that, I'm, all I'm doing is watching it inflate, watching it stretch, and when I feel like it's too much, I stop. Now this is on the larger end of how big this can go. It could probably even go a little bit bigger, but I feel pretty good about this. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see. There is one seam down the center of the balloon, but otherwise it's just freaking gorgeous. It's a completely translucent sphere. So like I said, you have that variety in size. You have options as to how big you actually want to inflate this. So now that it is inflated, let's talk about tying. Um, you're gonna wanna pinch it off at the, the nozzle there 
pretty rapidly because it does let air out very fast. You know this this tail, this nozzle, it is so wide and so thick that there's a lot of opportunity for air to come out. You've really got to pinch it off at the top there, okay? So the first thing you want to do is kind of stretch this out, stretch the tail specifically, pinch the end and pull, and it takes some muscle. You can really feel it stretching in there, okay? So that feels quite stretched out now. Ooh, maybe too much. No, I'm just kidding. That feels quite stretched out now. So what I'm gonna do from here is actually twist it many times, okay? And that kind of helps in the sealing process. It helps prevent air from leaking out. And I'm just gonna keep stretching because I really wanna get this tail nice and long for tying. All right, so I'm gonna twist some more. All right, that's what it's looking like. And now comes the fun part. Let's tie. So all I'm doing is making a regular knot with it, but with this PVC material, it's not easy. You gotta really pull tight, get a really good seal on there. And I'll be honest, I always tie it two or even three times because these have a tendency to leak air for me. So I always double or triple tie it to be safe and I really pull like crazy, you guys. Oh, look at that. But now it's done. And how beautiful is that? It looks like a bubble, like it is magical. Whether you're doing like some fairy tale enchanted whatever design or under the sea or even just on something floral, bubbly, beautiful, these make incredible accents. And like I said, they are available in a bunch of sizes. So they're a fantastic addition, but they do take a little bit of time. They definitely take some practice in getting used to it, some muscle to learn how to tie them and kind of attach them in just right. And one thing I wanna share about using aqua bobo bubble balloons, ink balloon garlands or balloon arches is in person, they are stunning. They make the most beautiful touches to your garland and your design, but they don't come through on camera that well when they're used in a design. They're almost invisible on camera and it's really hard to capture the actual beauty that's in front of you through a lens. So I would just kind of use a little bit of judgment on when to incorporate them into your design. If there's gonna be a lot of people there, it's gonna be a real bougie event, absolutely have at it. People are gonna be floored. It's really gonna make a huge difference. But if it's, I don't know, something where there's not, you're more doing it for the gram, you're more doing it for the pictures, try it out and see how it looks. But my own experience with it is you can almost never see them on camera. So I hate for you to put, you know, an hour or two of work into inflating a bunch of different sizes of aqua bobos, like painfully put them all in place. And then you take a picture and you're like, cool, this looks like, you know what I mean? Like it did two hours ago. That would just be a bit of a bummer. So definitely play with it and get the feel for what works for you and what looks good and everything. But that's just kind of my one cautionary tip with aqua bobos. So again, this is the dupe off of Amazon. I'm gonna go and inflate the brand name Qualitex Aqua Bobo Bubble Balloon and let you see how they compare. Okay, this is the largest size that I have. So the Qualitex ones have this pink plastic covering on them. The first time I used one, I was pretty confused, I'm not gonna lie. But it actually helps keep it moist, keeps it with the right elasticity and everything in there. So you don't wanna take those off prior to use. But as you inflate, it will start to pop off. You're gonna notice right when I start inflating, you know, as the balloon starts to inflate, it, those pink plastic coverings will start to pop off and then I'll peel them away, okay? And underneath that will be the most beautiful, pristine, clear plastic balloon, which I'm not gonna wanna touch with my fingers and mess up, all right? So that's gonna be the challenge. But this tail does open really easily to get on the nozzle, much easier than I have had with the dupe brand off of Amazon. Okay, here we go. You ready? beautifully clear that is. That 
that is pristine. Look at that. There is a little bit of a difference. This one's very thin and just looks perfect. This one is like a little thicker. Might have a little more whitish color to it in person. Gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this just the same way. This PVC is much thinner, so it's very easy to pull that and stretch it. All right, just my own observation here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that. Again, I'm trying not to touch the balloon. I don't wanna get any fingerprints on it. Ooh, that didn't work. All right, let me try this again. Ooh. Oh, there we go, look at that. These are much easier to tie. The other ones you'll get the hang of too. It just might take a few to practice with, you know? Tell me that's not stunning. Look at that beauty. Yeah, she's gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna tie her one more time. Make sure she is nice and sealed off there. Okay, there we go. I feel good about that. So it's this little itty bitty tail on it. So cute. I'm gonna go ahead and flake these smaller sizes as well so you can really see them all together. Okay, here we go with one of the smaller ones. I'm not gonna bother stretching it. I think I'll just do that for the Amazon dupes in the future. This one doesn't really feel like it will stretch. Doesn't need it, it's already thin and pliable. cute is this? Now the range on these was between five and nine inches. I think I probably got around a seven in there, so that's pretty close to perfect. So I went and tied that one three times all in the same spot and it feels quite secure there. So look, this little sucker, nice and cute. So I've got one of the larger sizes, a pretty small one, and I still have an itty bitty to inflate. I will say when these pink things start to pop off and peel away, you can feel there's tension in the balloon. It's being pulled one way or the other. So as you really help to peel these away and get them you know, off of the balloon entirely, it really relaxes and it feels much better. Okay, as you can tell, this is a super tiny balloon. It's probably gonna be inflated in like a couple of seconds and I don't wanna overinflate it. I think the maximum on this one is five inches. So I just need to kind of do it super quickly and carefully. This one doesn't wanna inflate, guys. Let me try again. Okay, so this little cutie pie, I don't think this is even five inches, but I pulled on the tail. Gonna give it a couple of really good twists here. And then we're gonna tie. All I'm doing is wrapping the tail around the fingers, tucking it in through the loop I created, and pulling it tight. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, at least twice, maybe three times. There we go, a little double tie. Pull that, pull that nice and tight there. Let's see if I can get a third one out of it. There we go. All right, so I've got three there. Look how cute this is. Come on now. Look how cute these are. They're awesome. So now we've learned how to inflate aqua bobo balloons, how to tie them. I'm gonna show you how to actually attach them into your creations in all the different ways we can do that. Now, believe it or not, we can actually attach these in with all the same methods we used in the orbs video. So that's gonna be either duct tape, gaff tape, fishing line, or 160s or 260s. Okay, so let's cut off a little section of tape and let me show you how that would go. So if we start with some gaff tape, okay, all we're gonna do is take the tail itself. I try to get the tape as close to the base of the balloon as possible so I can really stick it in exactly where I want it and position it just how I'm looking to go. So with this tape, you're able to actually attach this in behind one of the other balloons in the garland, like here on this table, for example. 
I can just kind of tape that in, press pretty well with the tape, and I have a cute little floating bubble balloon. It's pretty easy to peel gaff tape off of a lot of surfaces. It is sometimes possible to even pull it off and peel it off of a balloon if you put it in the wrong place or want to reposition, but just be careful. I've had it get stuck once or twice, but overall this is like a favorite of mine. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that here. Okay, another thing we can do is duct tape. Honestly, works the exact same way. I would say it's um, a little more permanent than gaff tape, but the holes on a balloon garland is gonna be just as good either way. Okay, so here I would just go ahead and put that on the tail there. Okay, and tape that in, just like that. Okay, now if we were gonna use a 260 or a 160, either one, doesn't matter which, go ahead and tie that in here at the base. I'll give it a nice tight pull there, maybe even two. Okay, and then I've got this nice long tail that I can use to wend and wind between the actual balloon garland wherever it's gonna be sitting. I will give you the same warning I did on the orbs. My like biggest piece of advice when you're tying these in is you wanna get the base of the balloon as close to the latex and the, the entire garland or creation as possible. You don't want this to look like it's sitting on top of it. You want it to look like it's part of it, like it's native to the entire thing and like it's part of that organic creation. So the key to doing that is keeping that base in with the rest of the garland. And lastly, we can do the exact same thing with fishing line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a loop in the fishing line, just like that. Slip the little tail in, okay? Pull tightly on the fishing line and maybe do a little extra knottage if I know how. I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess fishing line there so that's not hanging out anywhere. Now you can also suspend this if it's like Christmas and you wanna you know, do a cute little ribbon, turn it into an ornament, suspend it from the ceiling. That would look super cute. I think it's more the deco balloons than the aqua boba bubble balloons, but you see ones that look like this a lot with the hand lettering or the vinyl, stuff like that. Really, really beautiful, endless possibilities with it. But with the fishing line, you can either suspend it, dangle it, or you can use this too tight into the garland, whether on top or from below. Just wind this fishing line gently, firmly, through a whole bunch of other balloons to secure this in place exactly where you want it. Now I did wanna show you just a comparison between the Aqua Bobo bubble balloons and just normal transparent latex balloons. You can see there's a considerable difference. These are much more milky, much less translucent. They are transparent, but these, are, these Aqua Bobos are the perfect, clear, see-through, shiny, gorgeous, sparkly, I mean, they're just everything, to be honest. I really love them, if you can't tell. I do love to incorporate them in designs. I think they make a world of difference. And transparent balloons have use in some designs, but you can see there's a very big difference. Nobody's gonna mistake this for a normal balloon, I promise you. I hope I answered all your questions on aqua bubble, bubble balloons, what they are, how you use them, how to inflate them, how to tie them, how to actually put them in your designs. If I missed anything, feel free to ask me below. I will try to get back to you. And for anyone who's new to the channel, if you like what you're seeing, please give it a like, subscribe, hang out with me if you want. It's cool, we do this a lot. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.